So a good segue whenever talking about the imperfect um, and then going into something that's related to that is a grammar tense that's called the imperfect progressive. So the imperfect progressive is interchangeable with the imperfect that we talked about in a prior video. So remember that we have the preterite, we have the imperfect, and now we have something called the imperfect progressive that is interchangeable once again with the imperfect in certain scenarios. So with the examples that I have up here for you, I just wanted to show you kind of two different things that play at the same time. So I have sentences on the board that are first written completely with the imperfect and the progressive um, kind of underneath each other. So AKA corrían right here is the imperfect and then estaban corriendo is called the progressive or better yet the imperfect progressive right underneath here because it's interchangeable and we'll talk about that and get there in just a second. But then at the back part of this sentence, you'll see the verb metio, M-E-T-I-O, with an accent mark, and that is the preterite. So a couple things I want to show you in these examples behind me. First thing is, is that we are talking about the imperfect progressive and how the imperfect progressive can be interchangeable with the imperfect in certain scenarios. And forget about the imperfect progressive, which is the topic at hand right now. Also showing you that the regular old imperfect is often used in sentences along with the preterite. So um, kind of doing a couple of things all at one time because they are related, kind of sort of. So let's go step by step now that I've under, kind of helped you to understand what it is we're gonna be doing in this video. First thing, remember we have the imperfect, we have the preterite, you can go back and look at those videos if you would like. Now we have the imperfect progressive, We'll see how that's interchangeable with the imperfect in just a second. And um, I wanna start off before I get there by letting you know, when I say that we can have the imperfect like Korean and then have the preterite like metio in the same sentence, based off of the imperfect versus the preterite video that you probably have already watched, we know that generally the imperfect is gonna come in the front part of the sentence because what's it doing? It's giving a description of what was happening or it's setting the scene. And then the concrete occurrence or a concrete action or a concrete event that happens at a specific point in time comes up in the back half of the sentence. After the imperfect had already set the scene or given the description of what was going on or what was happening or what things were like, and then bam, we have the preterite that comes here. So let's look at that first and see how the imperfect and the preterite work together in the same sentence. And then we'll go to the point at hand, which is the imperfect progressive and its interchangeability with the imperfect. So look at the original sentences that I have written down. So we have ellos, which means obviously they. Ellos corrían. What is corrían? Corrían is the imperfect of the verb correr, which means to run, and um, it's conjugated based off of ellos. So what does that mean? We'll get there in a second. But we have ellos corrían, imperfect, rápido, pero el otro equipo metió. Metió is the preterite of the verb meter, and it's conjugated based off of this subject right here, the equipo, which is the team. So this whole sentence is something like this. They were running. Remember that the imperfect can mean used to run, it can mean we're running, it could be repetitively running in the past, habitually running in the past, ongoing for over a period of time, they were running in the past kind of thing. Um, but in this sentence, 
all of the imperfects are going to take on the meaning of was or were something in. So again, that might be another reason for which you would potentially want to look back at the imperfect versus the predator video because we talked about that in that video. So again, in all of these sentences, the imperfect in the original sentence that I have that has the imperfect and the predator, all of the imperfect is going to take on the meaning in English as was or were something in. They were running and yes, corrían, the verb correr in the imperfect, conjugated appropriately off of the subject, um, means two words in English, so the were running, they were running fast or they were running quickly, but, pero, el otro equipo, el otro equipo is the other team, and then a way to say, like, scored a goal, metió un gol. Metió, again, is what text? The preterite. So in this original sentence, we have the imperfect setting the scene of what they were doing, and then this more concrete, bam, the other team um, scored a goal. This original verb again is meter, M-E-T-E-R. Meter un gol is just a colloquialism, a way to say to score um, or to put a goal in or something like that. Um, so the verb is meter, M-E-T-E-R, conjugated in the preterite based off of the other team, el otro equipo. It is conjugated M-E-T-I-O with an accent mark over the O. Metió un gol. So once again, ellos corrían rápido, pero el otro equipo metió un gol. And again, what does that sentence mean? They were running fast or they were running quickly, but the other team scored a goal. Remember, preterist. I have squared all of the preterite in green for you, if you can see that. So if you see anything, this, this, and this, these are all preterite sentences in the back half of the sentence, because that's that um, more concrete specific occurrence that happened after the, um, the scene had already been set or a description of what was going on had been given by the imperfect. So we're not gonna um, look at how we change this to the imperfect progressive yet. We're going to just look at the regular, the first original sentence that I have for all of these. That will be the imperfect in the front half of the sentence and the preterite in the back half of the sentence. So this next one, él manejaba bien. So we have a he, manejar is like conducir. It's a way to say to drive. So we have manejar in the imperfect. Conjugated based off of a, so we have a manejaba bien, y de repente a chocó. Remember that I said all these in the back half are what tense? The preterite. So chocar is to wreck or to crash. Chocar, and in the preterite it would be conjugated based off of a, and it's spelled C H O. C O with an accent mark on it. So choco is the preterite. What does the sentence say? He was driving. He was driving my car to drive. He was driving well and de repente means all of a sudden or suddenly. He was driving well and all of a sudden a choco and all of a sudden he crashed. Then we go down here to the next sentence. We have Alicia, Alicia trabajaba, trabajar, the verb of to work in the imperfect, conjugated based off of this subject, Alicia. So we have Alicia trabajaba cuando, when, yo, I, the verb entrar, to enter, entrar, in what sense would this be? In the preterite, when I entered into her office, in su oficina, we could say a la oficina or a su oficina. There are a couple of different ways we could do this part of the sentence. But remember, entré, yo entré, I entered is the preterite tense of the verb entrar and trabajaba is the imperfect 
of the verb trabajar conjugated based off of Alicia. So what does the sentence say? Alicia was working. Alicia was working when I entered her office. So again, all of our sentences here, they um, they have the imperfect in the front half of the sentence. They have the preterite in the back half of the sentence. And the imperfect in the front half of the sentence, and all of these would take on the meaning of was or were something in. So in our first sentence, we had they were running. Second sentence, we had he was driving. Third sentence, we had she was working. And this is now the point at hand. Whenever your imperfect takes on the meaning of was or were something in. I was working, she was talking, we were walking, they were running, he was doing his homework. Whenever your imperfect takes on the was or were something in, you can actually always take out the imperfect and shove in, um, in its place, the imperfect progressive. Some students actually prefer the imperfect progressive because even though it's two words instead of one, it is more of a word for word palm down from English to Spanish, so it might make it a little bit easier for them. So how do we do the imperfect progressive? The first thing is, sometime in some Spanish class, you have studied something called the present progressive. The present progressive, just to recap and refresh memories, hopefully, the present progressive is, I am talking, you are listening, she is studying, we are eating. So the, the present progressive is the verb estar and then ando or yendo. So think about it, it's called a gerund. Um, so think about it like if I wanted to say, just to recap again, refresh from maybe a prior Spanish class, um, if I wanted to say I am talking, I would put estar in the present tense and then uh, make a gerund out of the verb to talk. So, hablar is to talk or to speak. I would chop off the AR and add A N D O, call it gerund, other things as well, but most of the time it's called a gerund. And the is starting the present tense conjugated based off of the person who talked, who's talking. If I can say, I am talking, I would say, yo estoy hablando. That is the present progressive. You should be able to tell that there's not a far leap between the present progressive, I am talking, yo estoy hablando, and this thing called the imperfect progressive, because there's only one thing that we have to do to make it different. Instead of wanting to say something like, I am talking, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say something like, I was talking. And then the only thing that we have to do between the present progressive that you should already know uh, where you had a star in the present tense and then you had a gerund after that with the ando or yendo um, in verb is instead of the star being in the present tense for the imperfect progressive, the a star is going to be in the imperfect. So the imperfect progressive, I have some stuff over here for you to look at kind of like a cheat sheet as we're going through these sentences. So remember to make the imperfect progressive, you're going to take a star, you're going to put it in the imperfecto or the imperfect. Uh, luckily it's regular, so it makes it easy. A star in the imperfect, we have estaba, estabas, estaba, esta, vamos, don't forget that accent mark or this A, estábamos, and then estaban. So we have a star in the imperfect, and then to that, we're going to add a gerund. So the gerund is the running, talking, walking, studying, eating, whatever. If it's an AR verb, we're going to chop off the AR to make this portion of it and add ando, A-N-D-O. If it is an ER or an IR verb, you're going to chop off the ER or the IR, and you're going to add I-E-N-D-O. Are there some irregular gerunds? Yes, but there's only a handful of them and if you'd like to look them up um, please feel free to do so but um, just a handful of the regular gerunds in Spanish. So again we have a star in the imperfect 
And then we have this gerunder, this run in, talk in, walk in kind of thing. Air verbs, you chop that off and you add ando. So if I went into make a gerund and say like talking, it would be hablando. If I happen to be working with an ER verb like comer, I would say comiendo. If I were working with an IR verb like vivir, to live, I would say viviendo. And this gerund is attached um, to or follows is start in the imperfect to make the imperfect progressive. And go back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, which is every single time you are using the imperfect and what you want to convey is was something in. You can take out the imperfect that might be a little bit confusing to you, maybe, and shove in or replace it with the imperfect progressive. And again, the reason students might like that is because it's more of a plunk down from English to Spanish. So all I have done is underlined our verbs that we originally had the, in the imperfect, Korean, and I have shown you what you can replace it with, with the imperfect progressive. So <laughs> we don't need to look at the whole sentence again, but you remember that ellos corrían rápido used to mean in our sentence, they were running fast or they were, were running quickly. Since our imperfect has the connotation of were running, we know that we can replace the imperfect corrían with this thing called the imperfect progressive, which would be estar in the imperfect. And any questions on that? Look over here. Estar in the imperfect, conjugated based off of the appropriate subject, ellos. So it's estaban. And then turn the verb to run, correr, C O R R E R, into a gerund. So make it running. We would chop off the ER from correr and add what? I-E-N-D-O, just like it says over here, and like I've done over there. So if I wanted to transform this sentence from imperfect with preterite back here at the end and turn it into the imperfect progressive, I could, and we would just have ellos estaban corriendo rápido. Remember that both of these mean the same thing. So if I were to make this sentence, I could say, ellos corrían rápido, and that would mean they were running fast or they were running quickly. Or I could say, ellos estaban corriendo rápido, and that would mean they were running fast or they were running quickly. And then, what did it say? Uh, but the other team scored a goal. Would remain the same. So on our next sentence, we had él manejaba bien. Manejaba in that sentence was he was driving well. Él manejaba bien. He was driving well. Since the, the meaning behind manejaba in the imperfect is was driving, that's how we know that we can replace our imperfect with the imperfect progressive. So we take a star in the imperfect. There we go. We take a star in the imperfect. El estaba, el estaba, conjugated based off of the right person. El estaba, just like this. And then take our verb manejar, which is originally M A N E J A R. Chop off the A R and add ando, A N D O, to make our driving, and then we we have an option. We can either keep it as the imperfect, el manejaba bien, he was driving well, or we can use the imperfect progressive down here and say, el estaba manejando bien, and they both mean the same thing. He was driving well. I'm sure you guys can see already that even though this manejaba in the imperfect means was driving, in this sentence, this, you can see, is more of a word-for-word -word plunk down from English to Spanish. But remember that you can only exchange the imperfect progressive with the imperfect whenever the imperfect that you're trying to utilize means 
was talking, was running, were studying, were eating, right? Um, and in our last day example, in the front part, we had Alicia trabajaba. Alicia trabajaba. Alicia was working from the verb trabajar to work. Alicia trabajaba. Alicia was working. Since we hear that was something in, we know that we can replace the imperfect trabajaba with the imperfect progressive. So we take estaba, the imperfect of estar, conjugated based off of Alicia. So look here for that. And then we take the verb trabajar, chop off the AR, add this right here, and we turn it into the work in. So we have Alicia estaba trabajando cuando yo entré, blah, 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 right? So the whole rest of the sentence will stay the same. But once again, just remember that the imperfect progressive isn't a far leap from whenever you study the present progressive. So if you remember the present progressive, this is probably extremely easy. And also remember that this, is, this can be helpful, helpful to you in your writing in Spanish or if you're doing any homework or speaking or whatever, because if you're ever not, not quite sure how to do the imperfect or if you're not quite sure, like, what is that? How do you conjugate that verb in the imperfect? As long as what you're wanting to say is, I was talking, she was working, they were reading, he was writing. Um, if that's what you want to say, and sometimes it can be easier for us to figure out the imperfect progressive, shove that in instead, and um, it, there's kind of less room for messing something up. You just have to remember, estar in the imperfect, estaba, estabas, estaba, estábamos, estaba, and then adding some ing things to the end, and that's your imperfect progressive. That is usually pretty easy for most students. Thank <laughs> you.